Um, hello, everybody, and welcome today um, to today's panel discussion Hi. on how to enter uh, your beautiful potted plant in the MSHS Potted Plant Show at the Minnesota State Fair. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. So why do you guys um, enter your plants in potted plant shows and love judging? Well, uh, I, I think, uh, speaking for myself, that I've, I've just learned so much doing this. Uh, the competition is really quite fun, but um, your whole world just gets to be a lot bigger when you attend a show than what you have in your own home. So you learn about lots of, lots of different kinds of um, plants out there that you had no idea even existed. Maybe you want to try, try some of those. And, and then you just learn about how to best pr present your plant. And again, the competition is kind of fun. If you win, golly, that's a great feeling. It's really a great feeling to be with the other people at the show and um, just in and you know going out and looking and seeing what the examples are and it's it's just really um, educational also and learning more about what to how a plant can look and and uh, how it can grow. Um, it is great to be able to grow plants at home that it just adds to your indoor environment, the green and the texture and the live, just having a live uh, plant in your home um, is, is inspiring and, and uh, healthful for you um, and your, well, for your well being and just, um, also for your indoor air quality, it's it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that um, I go out and I want to keep, you know, I I'm always interested in if I see something a little different or something that um, just recently I found a plant that um, I realized oh that's just another color of that one and and so it it's something that you can always learn a little bit more about. Plants are everywhere. And and uh, a big focus of our committee is is education. Uh, one, educating ourselves, educating those that exhibit, and um, also really there is no place in uh, probably the upper Midwest, uh, let alone Minnesota, uh, where there are so many people gather at one time. You know, we call it the Great Minnesota Get Together, and so there's so many public that comes through the, this show, and um, we try we uh, provide some. Uh, educational exhibits there but then just if they study the plants that that are uh in their families and classes uh there's an opportunity to learn learn a lot it's kind of a a gateway into a, a much bigger wider horticultural mm -hmm. world um so we we do our part we feel and uh and again when you're a teacher you really learn so we we i i can speak for myself i've learned so much being a part of this this group well, and we also have plant societies and and others involved in the show, so there are opportunities there to connect with other people involved in in various plants and uh, various classes of plants. Right. No kidding. And you know, my favorite part of it all is winning. I love it when I can come back and I'm finding a a blue or a red, even a white. Oh my goodness! It just pronounces horticulture distinction um and then the fun part about it is is that i have now the break rights so i'm able to go home and boast and share on my favorite social media platform to everything and what we do is is that we check out for i mean we get ribbons for outstanding design encouraging and excellence um but it's mainly is this like what mary had said all the marys and barb it's all of us coming together and sharing and being together and talking about what we really just love so much and you know i love the ribbons but the cash is really nice too so how do you enter it sounds like fun how does a new person and even a seasoned person enter the potted plant show um, any plant show will have a schedule, and that schedule um, will and tell you where to take your plant, um, what size plant, which plants you could enter, um, and other details. Laura, you can advance the slide. 
Um, so in the schedule, there will be a list of rules and um, and I think as a part of this class webinar, you had gotten um, the schedule forwarded to you. So if you wanna look at that right now, that would be great. Um, so the rules are not only for the judges, but also for the exhibitors. So you know what you um, need to have for those judges to give you more points and have your plant or your exhibit do better. Um, it'll tell you uh, how many, uh, what divisions there are, what classes there are. You know, Lord, Rita, I just had a quick yeah. question. You know, um, I don't think that my family has signed up for this webinar, but where could I direct them to find the schedule? Um, the show schedule for the Minnesota Horticulture Society Potted Plant Show um, for the State Fair, we have that every year. Um, and then on the Minnesota Horticultural Society website, there is a, a, a drop down box for um, events and go under State okay. Fair. And so the information and the show schedule is there. So you'll get a list of all the different categories that Great. you can pick from to have your plant. Great, thank you. And what about registration? So we like the plants, well, they must be dropped off on Wednesday. Um, it's always that Wednesday before the State Fair opens um, at the Agriculture Horticultural Building. Uh, this is in the same place every year. Um, you uh, uh, probably would be best to have your plant tags filled out. Um, and you can also find those plant tags to print off um, on the website as well. Um, fill out as much as you can with your name and your address, how long you've owned the plant, um, and what division and what class. And in addition to that, we would like you to have the scientific name if you know it. Um, so like for a geranium, it's pelargonium. Um, but uh, trying to do some research and, and get as close as you can. We will have volunteers and Rosie and I will be there as well as other members of our team to help you um, have it more uh, closely identified if need be. Um, and um, when you come on Wednesday, um, try and have your plant um, groomed and we'll talk a little bit more about that, have it ready to go. And we'll have a volunteer who will take your plant and put it in the proper category on the tables and give you more information. Great, that sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait. One of the great ways of identifying your plant, an easy way is if you have a plant, if you have an identification app on your phone, just click it and uh, just click a picture and go to that app and it's uh, often they will, pull it up. I know that I uh, I like picture this or iNatural and it pulls things up. So that can be an easy way of doing it. So the last true. slide, oh, I'm sorry. I'm the last slide um, showed one of the categories, which is collections. Um, and that's at the end of the um, listing of dif the different divisions. Um, but you know, this is an opportunity if you have uh, five or nine or more um, plants of the same type um, to show those artistically and to um, just uh, make it as one cohesive display using your plants, whether it's linked by color or um, type of pot or something like that to be a little artistic. Um, in this category um, for division A is indoor flowering plants. And there are some plants, of course, that we know um, we look forward to their blooms and grow them pretty much exclusively for their blooms. So these must be in bloom. Um, you can find out information on the uh, various uh, plant society websites. So for example, an orchid here, um, you can look on the American Orchid Society and find out what kind it may be and how to get it to bloom. Um, different orchids have different times of the year that they do bloom um, to help you uh, to be able to enter your plant in this category. Great. I, I did win a ribbon a few years ago on a blooming orchid that I had and it, it was just great. I, it felt really good. How exciting. 
Uh, and so when you are um, preparing your plants and deciding what to bring, um, you need to really examine them and, and uh, look at them thoroughly as we don't want any plants with pests or disease coming into the um, plant show. We don't want to start another pandemic, even though it's a plant pandemic, we don't want it. <laughs> And um, so if you see any, you know, when you're when you're grooming your plant, look for any sticky substance, any white substance, um, brown leaves uh, or spots that are browning. Uh, often the browning leaves and the, the spots can be disease. The others, the sticky or the white substance could often be insects of various kinds. You'll want to... Um, and if you to care for those, you want to figure out what they are. You want to take a magnifying glass and uh, see if you can identify them. And then go to um, uh, University of Minnesota has a great uh, yard and garden website that you can uh, look at various options, uh, looking at symptoms and what could be causing those problems, what disease or what pests are causing that. And you said that was the University of Minnesota Extension? Yes. Yard and Garden or? The Yard and Garden. You just go to uh, universityextension.edu, I EDU. believe. Yeah. And uh, Yard and Garden, and it'll pull up. Many counties for the Master Gardeners in Minnesota have op uh, uh, tables and answer times that they'll answer and um, take questions. Um, one of them is at the Arboretum on Saturday. So now that the pandemic is almost behind us, we've got more master gardeners out and about, and that'd be a good resource as well. Right. And don't try to take picture, good close-up pictures if you're bringing them anywhere to show them. You don't want to bring a leaf or to bring the plant material if possible um, because you don't want or, to spread it around. Yeah, or put it in a plastic bag that's secured. Right. Great idea. Next slide. Very and good. blooms, blooms, blooms. Like I mentioned, there are some plants that do have blooms and we look forward to those. Um, but sometimes it's just hard to get the, the, the timing right. You know, you can have it in buds and it's not ready till the week after the show, which is kind of a bummer. Um, you can go on the various plant society websites. Um, I mentioned Orchid Society, but also the African Violet Society of America. And there you can get information on how to exhibit your individual plant um, and what to do uh, to get your plant ready for a show, um, including getting it to think it's time to bloom again. Uh, so for example, this African Violet, um, you know, right about this time, you might want to remove all the blooms and then that will trigger a new bloom cycle in, in about six weeks or so. Great idea. And also to make sure that your pot, your pl plant is potted in the center of the pot, especially for an African violet. Mm -hmm. and, and you'd be rotating it uh, in, the, in, in the light too, so that it would uh, get its blooms oh. symmetrically. In the center, yep. Okay, maybe that's my problem. I'm just not turning them to the light because they're always leaning. Great. Hmm. So we have a category for children, and um, this is an opportunity for children to practice the art and science of horticulture also. Consider sharing your passion about plants with a child and have them exhibit their work. Um, the categories listed for the children are fairy gardens, for one, and the other one is to create your own class so they could have anything that they have taken an interest in growing and bring it in lots mm -hmm. of fun it really is sweet i just love that little fairy garden there that picture was darling yes you also want to have your plant looking its best for the show so sometimes a haircut is uh, a good idea uh, you want to cut, snip, or pinch off any blooms or leaves that are look, looking past their prime. Any straggling uh, leaves or stems that detract from the form of the plant. If you think of geraniums and asters, they're very good examples of plants where 
deadheading, cutting your spent blooms off, enhances the appearance of the plant. The plant will strengthen itself and reflower. You want to remove any dried, damaged leaves to improve the overall appearance, just like you would a neatly trimmed beard. The plant will also, yes, it will recover from that very quickly and look beautiful. I'd like to acknowledge Laurel Watt, who is a Ramsey County Master Gardener, for sharing an article that she wrote about deadheading and pruning for um, plants, indoor plants, and Mary, outdoor some, plants. Oh, I'm sorry. Some. Oh, I'm, can I interject? Some plants you don't yes. want the blooms. For example, coleus, they're not known for their blooms, so therefore you'd want to have just the leaves looking really good and then trim those um, blooms as they start to appear um, closely so that it doesn't detract from the plant. And, and I'd just like to uh, say a couple things about if, if you're a, a real novice beginner and have never shown before, the concept of grooming might seem a little odd to you, grooming a plant, but you just think about uh, like if the, the fancy dog shows you see like at Westminster, um, those dogs are all groomed and you wouldn't want to see them coming out matted uh, with burrs uh, in their, their uh, hair. And it's a, it's a similar kind of thing, putting your, your uh, best foot forward, so to speak, with your plant and having it look its best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I have a question. If I have a cactus that has a bloom on it, do I leave it on for the show? Mary, that might be a really good idea to do that if you can get it to the show so that it's looking fresh and uh, open and not uh, like it's starting to wither and, and brown. Um, having a bloom on a plant can indicate that the plant is mature and sometimes that's going to give you more points uh, over a similarly um, uh, exhibited uh, cactus and might might get you the blue ribbon instead of the blue or blue, blue ribbon instead of the red i'm sorry thank you but you also need to be careful you need to know whether that that bloom will last more than a day um because some of the cactuses and various others do not last as long and so you may get it there and by the time the judge sees it it may be starting to go down uh, a lot of times they get spent. Right, right. I have a little okay. question though on, on this picture that we're looking at here. Um, I just really love it. Look at the color and look at the texture. Um, what, what about the flower? Is that a flower over to the left and then a branch going up in the center? Um, I think there was some discussion earlier. Would you cut that off or would you leave that? What, what do you guys think? I would cut it off because I see enough interest in that plant and I think it takes away from the plant, uh, the look of the plant. It looks a little straggly. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's it's kind of a judgment call, but like Rita had said earlier, things like coleus actually look better, I believe, or we believe that in the judging process that it looks more consistent to have just the foliage rather than the the blossoms. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. And then there's this oh, pot here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the schedule doesn't tell you um, what to do with your pot, but um, it's part of the whole aspect, the overall uh, design. So what you should think about is, does it enhance your plant? You, what you don't want is it to detract from the plant. You don't want it to be real busy and, and maybe garish looking, or you don't want it to be broken or chipped or dirty, having cobwebs on it. Um, so, so sometimes the plant really fits, uh, or the pot really fits the category like these cacti here. Um, those are just terrific, I think, as far as really um, setting, those, setting those cactus off. Um, we do want to say that, you know, it is the Minnesota State Fair, thousands of people go through. So if it's a very rare family heirloom, maybe you don't want to bring that particular pot. Um, uh, we do our best to keep everything safe, but just keep kind of keep that in mind that this will be out in the public. Mm -hmm. That is just really great. You know, as far as design goes, it seems like that you guys have really covered a lot of things. Um, you know, from the cleanliness, you know, Barb, with, you know, the bugs, the disease, pests, 
Mary and Rita with, you know, talking about the schedules and cleaning it up. But judges, I think, are really looking for the uniformity of the size, the form, the color. And actually, you had said it pretty well, too, within the orchid, the stages of development with the bud formation, the flower formation, you know, when it is spent and when it would need to be cut. And then we take a look at a pot and we put that together. And, you know, I do believe this is just me personally, but I do believe it is all a preference uh, design. I mean, everybody loves their plants and everybody wants to show them off. But design does begin with grooming, um, you know, and making sure that nothing is damaged and um, everything is inspected. Like you say, really great housekeeping. For instance, this here is an outdoor um, coleus. Now with this here particular design here, I'm looking at not design, but this particular plant over to the left, I'm seeing that there's a chip, you know, in, in the top. So I would want to change that out and put it into something bigger. And uh, with doing that, it would probably become, become collapsed. So I would just snip it all down and I would just throw everything here into some water, get some new sprouts going. And then eventually what I would do is um, put everything together to form the creation on the right. And this is the coleus where we had talked about uh, cutting the um, blossoms off and how that can improve. The other thing that you can do with this plant when you do the cuttings is to place them in a pot and get more plants or improve mm -hmm. the, the volume of the plant. Mm -hmm. Yes, and remember for these outdoor plants, you have had to have them. By what is it, June 1st, you guys? Six, six weeks you have yes. to have it. Okay, so you would have to have it by June 1st in your possession growing. If it's an indoor uh, plant that you are going to bring for the exhibiting, it has to be six months. So um, that's your time frame for having to grow it inside six months um, outside um, June 1st. Great, can you say a little bit about this? Oh, yes, and this design, it's um, an exalis, and um, they're also known as a shamrock plant, but look at the beautiful color in the foliage on that. It's even blooming. Um, now, this particular plant does not um, have fabulous blossoms, per se, but there are blossoms nonetheless, and you can decide as the exhibitor if you would want to put this into a category where it would be having flowering, blooming, or not. Um, but um, I just love her smile. The only thing that I would do is I would probably clean up the pot a little bit. Um, another way, if you don't really have a lot of time for that, or if it's just really stubborn and you can't get that pot clean because it's such calcified material on your pot, um, get a larger pot and put it right into the existing or put that pot into a, a bigger pot so it just kind of makes it look fuller and then clean it up. I see there's some drooping leaves there. I would clean that up a little bit, but overall her smile and and the value right there of coming together to the fair and the pot of plant show um, as a learning and educational experience is is absolutely wonderful. It really is. It's nice to see those smiles. Uh, this is just a word about uh, uh, you, you don't really need to put in the glittery rocks that you see in this particular picture. Uh, just a nice uh, potting medium is what would be preferred. Um, this really would detract from the plant and um, so we just advise not doing this. And so um, at the end of the show, the show ends on Friday, uh, the 27th at nine o'clock. So you will have between nine o'clock and 10 o'clock to pick up your plants. Um, you will be given a parking pass on Wednesday when you drop off your plant. And that pass is to enter through the Underwood Street uh, 
ex entrance um, off of Como Avenue on Gate 7. And it's your responsibility to pick up those plants or that plant material. If you can't do it, you need to find someone else to do it for you and give them the parking pass. Um, if you arrive after nine o'clock, uh, you won't need an emission uh, ticket to get into the fair. If you come before nine o'clock, then, you know, if you want to hang out at the fair before you come and pick out your plant, you'll need to have an entrance ticket into the fair. Great. So, is there anything else? So I'm wondering, so we are not allowed to get into the fair till 9 p.m., right? You, right. Okay. Or if you, if you do, if you want to get in without paying the admission fee to, to the fair room. Oh, I see. Okay. And it, then we have to have everything picked up by what time? By 10, 10 o'clock. Okay. So you got an hour to pick that up. I've heard it's kind of crazy and you have to kind of really drive slow because of all the people in the state fair and you just have to put your flashers on and just kind of go real, real slow with the pedestrians yes. all around. And some, and sometimes you can get lost, but people will help you out and you'll find your yeah. way. And it's kind of and, right over there by that haunted house, right? Isn't it's that right in the it horticulture, the horticulture building right across from the haunted house. Yeah, uh, you will. Yeah. You'll probably come in from the other direction, if I recall if it's the same as it had been but um and if you only have a plant or two and it's easy to carry then you can just park somewhere else and walk in and carry your plant back to the car if you have a larger amount of plants then you'll want to drive in and and uh pull into the horticulture building great great can we just yes. summarize that really quick so yes on wednesday they pick up their parking pass. They can use that parking pass to park on the fairgrounds and they can hang out and do whatever they want to in the fairgrounds and then go and get their car and come over to the Hort building at nine to pick up their plants. Is that correct? Yeah. That sounds pretty well, sums it up correctly. Okay. Yes. But they have to get that parking mm -hmm. pass on Wednesday. So folks, don't forget to grab that when you bring your plants. Yeah, all the, yes. the parking pass is only good for you getting in to the to pick up your plants. It is not in for the whole day or anything like that. You would Correct. have to buy a ticket to do that. Right. But you yeah. can stay parked in the parking lot. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've been um, participating or I've been a part of the plant show for three years. This is my third time around and I've had a lot of fun with it. So I encourage people to join. Um, mm -hmm. I can't believe how many people walk through the potted plant show each year. That wing is full and people are so intrigued. So, Right. I've actually been, um, I belong to a lot of the different societies. So I'm actually going to um, share this information with all of them. Um, maybe I might even bring some of my ribbons along. I've got a great big pegboard. Um, I show them off. I'm kind of vain <laughs> that way. But I like them. And they make me happy. So anyway, um, right. So i just going to share with all the different societies, your friends, um, the children, grandchildren, nieces, you know, get everybody involved with the State Fair and, and the Minnesota State Hort Society plant had a plant show. Yeah, it's a fun tradition. So it now is. we are going to open it up for questions. And I do have um, some questions here. Are you panelists ready? Sure. All yeah. right. Um, the first one is, we touched on this in the beginning, but can you go through one more time? When do folks show up to the show? When do they drop off? Do they need anything special when they arrive? Uh, August Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, um, on the schedule, it is it is Wednesday, um, August August twenty fifth. Yes, and and that time is at um, let's see the larger exhibits they come in at ten, but I think uh, individual um, exhibits start about twelve noon. Yeah, twelve mm -hmm. till five, I believe, or four thirty. Right, till so five thirty. And then we'll close the doors need, down at five thirty. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could they you mention that? Like, why is it so important to be there by five thirty? 
because we need to place we need to place those plants and get organized for the judges to go through and do the judging. Uh, our judging starts at six o'clock, so we need to have those plants placed and looking good um, for your benefit, so that it will uh, accentuate your plant. And so it is best to come mm -hmm. early, and so that we have time to work on that and prepare for that. I'm sorry, yeah. you guys. We have some feedback coming in somewhere, um, and it looks like we lost Rita. Um, so make maybe sure we should we all maybe we should all mute unless we're talking. I think that's a good idea. I hear some birdies. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, we just talked about this. The question was that came in earlier. When do I pick up? And we did just discuss that. It's from nine to ten. Really important to be there before ten because another show. I think it's the Gladiola Society loads in at 10. And then they work all night for the next day, which amazes me. Um, a question that I'm not sure you guys can answer. I've never been to the parking lot, but the question is how far is the parking lot that um, exhibitors can park in from the A Court building? A lot, I can it can be a long way. I mean, it can be close. There's a lot of parking lots, so. Okay, so they have one. The parking pass for the gate seven will put you right behind the haunted house and you can walk through those buildings and get to the court building. It's maybe one block. Yeah. Okay. And I always bring just a little portable collapsible wagon or, or a grocery cart just to carry my pot if I have just one exhibit or something, but just something to aid in carrying that. Um, I also have to admit it, but I like to sneak over to the Prano Pup stand after I pick up my plant <laughs> and grab myself a corn dog. Um, so just to summarize that, you'll get a parking pass. It sounds like you can use the parking pass in multiple locations. However, it would be most convenient to park behind the International Bazaar, which is behind the haunted house. Um, off, of gate seven. off of off of Como, yes. On gate seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so I got a question of why should they print their own tags? Because when you come in and you are um, registering, there may be other people coming at the same time. If you have your tag filled out and uh, have the correct information as far as identification and all. You can just, um, we can check it through and you're on your way. If you have to fill everything out, it takes a lot more time. And um, once again, if there's a lot of people there, it can be a little more confusion and whatever. Yeah, it it's just a lot of I think for your convenience, you're right. It is a convenience for you guys to bring them and drop them off and um, quickly just say, here I am. And um, here's the category I want. but it just expedites things just in a quicker, timely fashion, especially if it's hot or if there's a lot of people waiting in line too. It Which does is get why we also, we also support you. We would like you to find the identification. Yes, we will have people on hand that can help you, but we really would like you to take mm -hmm. the time to try and identify it before you get there because that can take a lot of time and energy and sometimes um, our bandwidth and our our connections to uh, look things up on the line are difficult at the fair. Um, so um, that's one of the reasons is to yeah, just the other thing the if, you're, if you're kind of pushing it and coming in at five o'clock or five thirty and have that information, uh, you don't have that information yet. You're really just kind of pushing pushing our show. And uh, we do it, it. There is a lot to do to 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 get all the judging done. So we, you know, if you're going to be coming late, for sure, we would recommend that you have that that tag all filled out ahead of time. That's it looks true. like I have one more question. If folks have more questions, please type them in now. Um, but this one is one that you touched on, but maybe the person's asking for a little summary. Um, how long do I have to own the plant? You mentioned outdoor mm -hmm. versus indoor. Yes, yes. Um, what I had said is, is that for an outdoor plant, uh, maybe you're, well, 
I don't want to use geraniums because sometimes people will winterize them and keep them in, but maybe it was just a great big basket of petunias and you know you just received it right before mother's day but you really love it you really want to show it you've taken good care of it all summer long so that has to be from june first for your annuals and for those kind of things for your potted plants if you have something that is a tropical house plant that you've moved out for the summer and you're moving it back in that house plant normally and during the winter conditions um it's in the house you have to have owned it for six months or longer okay that makes sense mm -hmm. okay um do you have anything else you would like to add i think those are all of our questions today mm -hmm. i would just like to add that that information is in the schedule that yeah you that schedule be. takes you through the whole show it is the what do you say the show's bible yes indeed you everything you need Mm -hmm. um, so if you um, would like to learn more about joining the judging and exhibiting committee or are interested in volunteering at the show, um, please go to our website at www.northerngardener.org or you can email me, uh, Lara, at llshomer at northerngardener.org. Yeah. And yeah, I just want to thank everybody so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, or today. Thank you, panelists. Um, this was really interesting. And I've gotten some thank yous already um, coming in. So thank you. I'd love to hear that. It's a very interesting, um, informative we hope, webinar. We hope we, we hope we see you on the 25th. Yes. Well, if you do yes. and you're new, come and tell us. And tell Great. us. That, uh, tell us so if it's your first first time and yeah. uh, we'll show you around. We'd love yeah. to see you and your plants. Yep. Yep. It's, it's so fun. Thank it is you. just really fun to be a part of the tradition. Um, yeah. So thanks, everybody, again, for joining. Um, if you'd like to stay on top of the great work that we're doing at the Hort, uh, you can follow us on social media at, um, at MinHort um, or visit us at our website, northerngardener.org, or um, subscribe to our fantastic e-news. And that link is there. So thanks and so much, everybody. Are you on everybody. Facebook, Laura? Uh, and we are on Facebook also. Yep. Great. The, uh, yeah. Minnesota State Horticultural Society. Yeah. Go green thumb. Go good. Yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, everybody. This recording um, 